Hi students, welcome to SPS University. So we are discussing about organisms and populations. In the previous session we discussed about organisms, now we are going to discuss about population. So population is the number of individuals of same species which are living in a geographical area at a given time. At a given time in an area, the number of species, same species living, it is called population. So in population, there are attributes like the birth rate and the death rate. Say so population has certain attributes, whereas individual that is organism does not have. Individual will have birth and death, but population will have birth rate and death rate. That is, death rate and birth rate means per capita birth rates and death rates in a specific area in a given time. So how to go to this? Okay. Besides the birth rate and death rate, sex ratio. So how many individuals in a population are of male or of female? Okay. It doesn't have a sex, but it has sex ratio. Okay. For example, for every thousand males in a given population number of females in a, a number of females in a particular geographical area so here if you see this the sex ratio it is 11.7 million girls have gone missing okay so here you can see the sex ratio that is has fell to 909 in 2011 to 13 and 1896 to 2015. That is, for every thousand males, there are 909. There are 896. Okay. So, so, like this, if we see the different states in India which has the sex ratio of females with when compared with males. Okay. So, in the entire population, that is, if we take the entire population. So in that population, there will be three different groups of people, individuals, that is post-reproductive, pre-reproductive, reproductive, and post-reproductive. Pre-reproductive means who cannot do reproduction, reproductive, who can perform reproduction, post-reproductive. So who has in the veteran age, old age, they come under post-reproductive. So depending upon the ratio of these pre-reproductive, reproductive, post-reproductive, post there are different types of age pyramids. That is, there is expanding population, stable population, declining population. So the bottom line represents pre-reproductive, the blue line represents reproductive and the light brown which represents that is post-reproductive. Okay. So the three, three pyramid that is expanding population, stable population, declining population. So expanding means where the pre-reproductive people are more in number than reproductive and post-reproductive. Stable means the pre-reproductive and the reproductive people are more or less same in number. Post-reproductive are less. Declining means the pre-reproductive are less in number. That is called, that leads to a declining population. Okay. After age pyramids, the next aspect is population density. So what is meant by population density? So number of individuals, species present per unit area. It is represented with the symbol capital N. So how to calculate population density? There are methods like direct method and indirect method. Direct method means by counting the number of individuals physically. 
but indirect method means where we can't count the methods physically we go for indirect methods that is the calculation of tiger population density based on pug marks pug marks means the footprints and fecal pellets and next if you want to calculate the number of fish in a pond the population density of a fish in a pond that is number of fish caught in a per trap this is one method this is one indirect method an indirect method there is relative density so relative density means where for example if you take the large banyan tree and parthenium plant so both can be calculated by relative density by taking their biomass into consideration so in this uh, relative density here we cannot take number we can take the biomass into consideration so the population density of banyan tree and parthenium are taken that is the biomass is taken into consideration and next the population growth so what is meant by population growth in population growth there are natality b means birth mortality d death immigration it is represented by i e migration that is represented by e so natality means it refers to number of births during a particular time given period of time these are two initial one the same the number of deaths in a population during given period time it is called mortality and next immigration which is represented by i capital i is the number of individuals of species that come into the habitat from others during the time period this is called immigration e migration is the number of individuals population who left the population and gone elsewhere during the time period it is called e migration so here in population growth natality mortality immigration e migration will play an important role and to calculate the population density so there is an equation that is n means population density t at a particular time to this add 1 nt plus b plus b plus i subtracted with d plus e so here natality will add immigration will add mortality will and immigration will remove from the population so due to natality and immigration the population density will increase and due to this mortality and immigration the population density will decrease so here so to calculate the population density the equation is nt plus nt plus b plus i minus subtracted by d plus e okay nt plus 1 is population density at a time for example the population density of 2022 that is for example it is 2022 that is 2021 plus 1 that is 2022 b means birth rate that is natality in migration d means death rate mortality e means immigration moving out of the population okay here population density will increase due to number of births plus number of immigrant b plus i okay when it is more than the number of deaths plus the immigrants otherwise it will decrease if number of deaths and immigration is more the population will decrease okay so here when it come to population growth so in population growth there are various aspects in this like there are exponential growth and logistic growth what is this exponential growth says it says that 
whatever resources are available that is food space availability is unlimited if the food resources and the space resources are unlimited so what happens is the population will increase in exponential here birth rate is represented as b and death rate is represented as d then increase or decreasing that is n in a period of time t so the formula for this is dn by dt is equal to b minus d multiplied with d. the b minus d means that the birth rate minus death rate and birth rate minus death rate is or or means the intrinsic rate of natural increase the formula is that is dn by dt is equal to rn or means b minus t birth rate minus death rate so here if you see the this one here the population exponential growth the equation for this is dn by dt is equal to rn r represents intrinsic rate of natural increase so here this is that is if you draw a graph the population density on y axis time on x axis so this one represent this graph represents exponential growth where dn by dt is equal to rn okay. and if you take this one is logistic growth where k represents it in logistic growth that is if you see the standard line that is the constant line it represents carrying capacity so in growth models there are specifically two growth models one is exponential growth and another one is logistic growth exponential growth says unlimited which is not possible naturally naturally it is seen with is logistic growth and when you come to exponential growth besides dn by dt is equal to rn there is another equation that is logarithmic equation so the logarithmic equation is nt is equal to n not e to the power of rt nt is population density after a time t n0 that is population density at time 0 r is equal to intrinsic rate of natural increase e is the base of natural logarithm so this is another equation to calculate the population density that is the population density in exponential growth so exponential growth is just a theoretical one which is not possible naturally why because in nature the resources are limited and as well as there are checkpoints in the nature so checkpoints means the natural disasters which will control the population growth the next realistic one which is seen in the nature that is logistic growth okay. so here what it says is in logistic growth that is the population of a species that is permit to grow and develop in the population is logistic growth in logistic growth various things will come into picture like competition is one of the major one limited resources okay. in this competition unlimited resources limited resources only fittest will survive and reproduce and which one is doesn't fit it will become extinct so in logistic growth the aspects like competition limited resources the fittest individual will come into picture who satisfy this that is who in these three three criteria they will survive other organisms will become extinct okay so here you can see the logistic growth which is that is the government of many countries have realized facts and various times with view to limit human population growth. okay why the countries are limiting why because in nature in a particular habitat 
enough resources to support maximum possible number of individuals. Beyond this maximum possible number, there is no further growth. And this limit is called carrying capacity of that species. So for any species, there is a specific carrying capacity that is in nature, there is a resources to support maximum population. So this limit is called carrying capacity. Beyond this, there is no population growth. So a population growing in a habitat with limited resources, initially it shows a slow growth that is called lag phase, followed by next phase that is acceleration phase, where the phase is very fast, fast growth in the population, and next followed by declaration, and finally asymptote, that is when the population density reaches the carrying capacity, that is it becomes too constant. And to calculate this population growth in logistic growth, that is, there is an equation. And the curve which comes is sigmoid curve. So which is a sigmoid curve. So when time is taken on and the population density on this. So here it is, dn by dt is equal to rn multiplied with the k, subtract the minus n by k. k means carrying capacity. So K means carrying capacity. So like this, if you take these two models, exponential growth and logistic growth, logistic growth is naturally occurring, which is realistic one. Whereas the exponential growth is the theoretical one, which is not possible in nature. Okay. In nature, there will be limited resources, competition, and next the fittest individual will suffer. So in nature, there are many life history variations. Life history varies from one organism, that is in the process of evolution, the most efficient reproductive strategy it is followed. Like for example, if you see some organisms breed only once in their lifetime, like salmon, fish, bang. But some others will breed during their many times during the lifetime, like birds and mammals. So bamboo and salmon fish which reproduce for only one time during the life. So once they reproduce, they will die. The next minute they will die. And some reproduce many large number of small organized, that is small size of swings, that is oysters, oysters and pelagic fishes. While others produce small number of large size organisms like birds and mammals. So at a time they can give only two. My man, if you take, they can give to only one and one, which is very large. Okay, so like this, there are life history variations in organisms towards the evolution. There are a lot of life history variations. Like some organisms will reproduce only once, some will produce, reproduce many times, some produce many number of small size, and some will produce like birds and mammals will produce small number of large size hospitals. So till now we discussed about the population growth, the population that is density, next life history variations and we discussed about attributes of population. Follows on SPS versity in social media. Okay, now we are going to discuss about population interactions. What is this population interactions? Even though there are many populations, there will be species are interdependent in an ecosystem. So species is not an individual unit, they are interdependent with each other. Okay, that is called population interactions. So based on the type of species below or below. So there are various types of population interactions mutualism competition predation parasitism commensalism amensalism so plus means benefited both are that is the organism is benefited here it is benefited so in mutualism both are benefited whereas in competition both are harmed minus means so they get harmed predation one is getting predator will get benefit 
prey will get harm. Parasitism. Parasite will get the benefit. Host, that is, parasite will get bliss and host will get this. Come in soul. That is, one will get benefit, another no benefit, no, no benefit, no harm. I mean, sadism, another harm, no benefit, no harm. So these are different types of population interactions present in a population. Mutualism, competition, predation, parasitism, commensalism, amensalism. So what is meant by predation? So predation means it is where it is killing of one organism by another one for their food. Here you can see lion, tiger and killing other organisms. So the organism which kills it is called predator and the which one is killed it is called prey. So here prey is harm and predator is benefited plus. Plus for benefit and prey that is minus. So here you can see not only even carnivores, even herbivores, here also if you see herbivores, that is the cow feeding on, the buffalo is feeding on the grass. So here grass is prey, it is predator. In herbivores, which one eats, which will eat, that is predator, which is eaten, that is prey. So even the predator-prey relationship can be seen in herbivores, not only in carnivores. So predation is the major conduit, conduit means channel for energy flow. Okay. So where there is a high energy flow through this. Okay. And it is highly prudent interaction to maintain ecological balance. What is this highly prudent interaction? Highly prudent means the predator will not eat the prey, all the prey at a time. If predator eats all the prey at a time, what will happen? It leads to ecological imbalance. So that's why it is called highly prudent. Which or that is which doesn't eat, the predator will not eat the entire prey all the time. That is, both predator and prey populations are kept under check. They are kept under check. Like the best example, if you take in 1920, when cactus was introduced into Australia, that is prickly pear, it is called. Okay. When it is introduced into Australia, the cactus population has increased abnormally. Why? Because there is no prey for cactus. Okay. Like when there is no prey, the predator population will increase. So what has to do? There should be prey. That means there should be a control only when it is our native predator. So what they have done is they have introduced a moth. Then the cactus population has come to control. This, here if you take the cactus and moth, cactus is the prey and the moth is predator. So moth is predator, cactus is prick. So the cactus is co controlled by the moth. Okay. And at the same time you can see the importance of predator. Okay. So here in intertidal zone of American Pacific coast. Okay. So Pisaster was one of the predators, one of the important predators. And this predator was removed from this intertidal zone. When it is removed, that is, it has caused to, it has led to extinction of more than 10 invertebrate species. Why? Because due to removal of this predator, that is the pisaster, the competition among prey has increased, which has led to extinction of more than 10 invertebrate species. Okay. The predator prey and relationship is just like hide and seek. Okay. So it is just like hide and seek. 
the predator tries to catch the prey and the prey tries to escape from predator there are different mechanisms like you can see the predator and prey like insects and frogs there is a camouflage they change their color to avoid detected easily by the predator so here you can see cryptic coloration camouflage by moth if you see this moth the color of the mouth and the color of the tree trunk is look same so that the what we call the the predator cannot identify this and you can see warning coloration so warning coloration means danger sign whenever a predator comes okay like chameleon will change its color according to the background that is camouflage the cryptic coloration okay. that is predator that is prey will always try to escape from predator that is some disasterful also like if you take monarch butterfly it will feed a poisonous weed during the larval stage as it feeds the poisonous weed during the larval stage it will accumulate poison during this larval stage in the fold so whenever a bird feeds on the predator feeds on this monarch butterfly what happens is it will die so it is a disasterful one aspect to protect from predator and you can see there is models like you can see mimicry so the original one is monarch butterfly but the viceroy lemnitis are keepers looks like monarch butterfly but the original one is monarch that is danis pexipus in snakes if you see that is crate which is venomous okay but wolf snake which is non poisonous non 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 venomous means it is non poisonous so the wolf snake is non poisonous but if you see externally the wolf snake looks like a crate it is a mimic okay till now we discuss about examples of that is the animals like monarch butterfly the great snake the wolf snake we have discussed but what about plants how do they get protected from predators how do they escape from predators okay. like if you see this phytophagus this is one which will feed on liquids of the food okay and if you see the kelotrophis plant this is kelotrophis plant what you are seeing in the image okay from this kelotrophis plant when it is broken we can see there is secretion of inside this there is latex and this latex is rich in cardioglycosides okay when any animal consumes this one what is what will happen is due to cardiocolecretion what happen glycosides what happens is increase in the force of contraction of heart where it leads to heart failure so that's the reason why animals doesn't feed on kelotrophis that's the reason why animals doesn't feed on it okay so here you can see that is nearly 25% of all insects are known as phytophagus feeding on plants sap and other parts of plant okay there are problem for severe problem for plants from animals why because the plants cannot run away so they have to be showing an adaptation mechanism to protect from this like if you take acacia and cactus they have thorns which are pointed structures so where animals will not feed them this is pointed set the thorns is a morphological means of defense where the thorns will protect the plant from animal feeding that is the predators which are animals okay so till now what we discussed is the predator the predation where the predator and prey or both interaction and next we are going to discuss about the competition so what is this competition so there is a lot of competition between different types of species 
for resources specifically for resources that is food space shelter there is a lot of competition according to darwin struggle for existence and survival of the fittest in the nature okay there is a lot of competition for food the resources food water shelter space there is a lot of competition. that's why there is a competition among different types of species so due to this competition what happens is both get harm that's why there is a minus that is symbol in this interaction both the species are minus harm so here if we take the gauss's competitive exclusion principle okay. what it says actually according to gauss what is this when two closely related species competing for the same resource they cannot coexist indefinitely so what happens is which is competitively inferior will be eliminated eventually so during the process of competition what happens is the one which is inferior it will be eliminated from the competition which is superior it will survive so what competitive exclusion principle says is the organism which is superior in the competition will survive and the organism which is inferior it will become it is eliminated so when it is eliminated so it is it becomes extinct from the competition okay. here there is a competition between two same species which is very strong in cross species because resources habitat will be same for both the organisms but there is even there is interspecific competition between unrelated species to be same resources like for example if you take flamingos and fishes will compete for zooplankton in the food so flamingos belongs to aves so, okay fishes belongs to pisces so there is a competition between flamingos and aves for the same food resource that is zooplankton where there will be competition okay so here in this fishes will be obviously competitively more superior whereas flamingos are that's why flamingos get eliminated from the competition so here you can see these are flamingos these are fishes and both have common food resource that is zooplankton both will fight for the same food resource so here one will be inferior one will be uh, that is superior which is inferior will be eliminated which is superior it will survive here flamingos becomes that is eliminated from the competition Okay, and fishes will survive. That is more superior. Okay, so here, in this process of competition, the elimination of species is seen. Okay, for example, if we take in Galapagos Island, a big den tortoise has become extinct within a decade after introduction of birds. That is in the Galapagos Islands. of the introduction of abingdon that is uh, goats what happened is the abingdon tortoise has become extinct that means it is eliminated what is the reason is for both of them the resources same okay so here in competition the resources need not be limited as in the case of interference competition the feeding efficiency of one species is reduced to species of another species even the resources are abundant even there are abundant if there is a competitor the feeding efficiency will decrease so competition is best defined as the process by which fitness of one species is measured in intrinsic rate of natural increase is 
significantly lower in the presence of other species. When other species is present, the R value of one species, other opposite species will decrease. Just due to a present of the competitor, not due to resources. So here, the main aspect is, generally in competition, there will be a fight for resources like food, water, shelter, space. But even then, if they are abundant, there will be an interference competition. What is this interference? When a competitor is present, the efficiency of one species will be reduced due to just due to presence of this one, even though resources are present. So that's why it is called interference competition, where the efficiency of one species will get reduced. Okay. So till now what we discussed is that is Gauss's competitive exclusion principle, next that is interference competition, elimination of species and now we are going to discuss about competitive release. What is this competitive release? So competitive release means suppose if any that is in competitive release that is in a geographical area if we take in some cases what happens is whose distribution is restricted to a small geographical area due to presence of competitively superior species. Okay. Due to presence of one species what happens is the distribution is restricted. Due to this restricted distribution, why it is restricted? Due to presence of competitive. But when this competitively superior species is removed from that area, what will happen is the population, the distribution of is will increase. That is called competitive release. So competitive release, here you can see the Cornell Fields experiment. He has taken intertidal rocky area. This is an intertidal rocky area where the barnacle, the balanus is dominating species, that is competitively superior species. And catalamus, which is which is competitively inferior species. Okay. So here balanus is superior and catalamus is inferior. Eventually, what happens is according to Gauss's complete explanation, it will be eliminated. But when this barnacle is removed from this intertidal area, the distribution of this catalamus will increase. So here you can see that is when two species are competing for the same resource, the inferior one will be eliminated. So here you can see this is okay. And in the Cornell field experiment, that is when the competitively superior species is eliminated, what happens is the prey population, that is the population of other species will be increased, that is called competition release. And here we are seeing another aspect in competition, that is resource partitioning. What is this resource partitioning? Second to Mark Arthur, the coexistence of five closely related species of warbler boats. These are warbler boats. Okay. There is a competition among these warbler boats for resources. But to reduce this competition, what they will do is they will do resource partition. The same resource, but they will feed at different timings or different places. That is called a resource partitioning. It is just to reduce the competition, which is called a resource partitioning. So in competition, we have discussed about resource partitioning, Gauss's competitive exclusion principle, competition release, elimination of species. These are all aspects we discuss. 
Resource partitioning means where there is a sharing of resources by closely related species, just like warbler birds. Competition release, where if you take the Balanus and Catathermus, where Balanus is dominating, Catathermus is inferior. When Balanus is removed from intertidal zone, what will happen is that is the population of the distribution of Catathermus will increase. That is called competitive release. Elimination of species. When there is a strong, there is a competitor, what happens is one will get eliminated. This says competitive exclusion principle. Interference competition, where due to presence of one competitor, even though the availability of resources is abundant, the efficiency of one will be decreasing. That is called interference competition. So these are different aspects which we have dealt in competition. Follows on SPS versity on social media. So the next type of one is parasitism. What is parasitism? It is an interaction where one will be depending on other for food, shelter and completion of life cycle. The one which will depend, that is called parasite, which will support, which will give food at all, that is host. So your host is harmed and the parasite is benefited. In this, Parasite gets benefit, host gets harm. So this type of relationship is called parasitism. So there are many parasites like insects, viruses, bacteria, fungi, helminths, protozoans. These all cause different diseases. Okay. They enter into the host body. When they enter into the host body, for their survival, they will show a few adaptations. Like in some parasites, we can see presence of suckers for attaching to the host. Suckers are meant for, for attaching to the host. Okay. Loss of digestive system. They don't need digestive system. Why? Because already they get the processed food that is already they get that they take the digested food from the host high reproductive capacity so that they can increase their population so these are few adaptations to overcome in on in parasites to survive in the host and it can be virus bacteria fungi protozoan helminths or insects these are different parasites which are seen so here when you come to the parasites, there are basically ectoparasites and endoparasites. Ecto means which will live on the surface of the body. Endo means which will live inside of the body. And there is a special type of parasitism that is brood parasitism which is seen in cuckoo and cuckoo. So which is seen in cuckoo and cuckoo. So first we will see about Ectoparasites, like you can see head lice, which is present on human head in the presence, which will take blood as its meal. It is an ectoparasite. Okay, and ticks on dogs, copepods, these all will come under ectoparasites, which live on the body, that is, which live on the body surface. Come to endoparasites like flagellates, Gerardia intestinalis, Entamoeba, Plasmodium, which causes malaria, Ciliates, Pinea sodium, which is a parasite, Fasciola hepatica, which causes liver flu, which will cause liver flu, Ascaris lumbricoids, which is an nematode which causes ascaris. Like this, there are many nematodes, protozoans, bacteria, virus, fungi, which will cause, which are parasites on humans and which will cause diseases. Okay. Not only in animals, even in plants, there are parasites which are very less. 
like what you are seeing the yellow colored one is cascuta it is called devil shoe string it is a parasite and missile stool you can see this is a parasite so this cascuta doesn't have any leaves it doesn't have leaves no leaves no leaves means it, can, it cannot do photosynthesis so for food and water it is a complete stem parasite for food and water it depends on other plants like missile stool now we are coming into an interesting aspect that is brood parasitism what is this brood parasitism it is a very interesting example it is a bird lays its eggs in the nest of another bird So here if you see this, the cuckoo lays its eggs. Okay. So here you can see. In this parasitism, where the parasitic bird will lay its eggs in the nest of its host and let its host incubate them. So here you can see. The eggs of parasitic bird. They look like same host egg in size and color so that they cannot identify, they cannot detect the foreign eggs. Okay. In this relationship, the cuckoo and crow are in neighborhood during breeding season, which is called brood parasites. Here, the host board, which, is, which cannot identify its own eggs and other eggs, what it will do is it will incubate by consuming a lot of energy. So they will do incubation of their own eggs as well as other parasite eggs so both both get incubated it is called brood parasitism which is seen in the what we call in cuckoo and crow next is next type of population interaction is amensalism okay here one is neither benefited neither harmed that is zero but other is meant harm. Like for example, penicillin is one of the fungi which restrict the growth of bacteria. Okay. So here bacteria is always harmed, that is minus. But there is no benefit, neither harm nor benefit to penicillin. That is zero here, that is bacteria is minus. So this type of relationship is called amensalism. And next is commensalism. So this is an interaction in this one is benefited. That is plus. And there is neither harm nor benefited due. So here you can see. This is cow. This is cattle aggregate. The birds which are called, which are present surrounding to the cattle, they are called cattle aggregates. When the cow is feeding on the grass, these cattle aggregates will be moving around this so that they get the insects and they will get, that is this will get benefited and this one is zero. So this cow doesn't get neither harm nor benefit. But cattle aggregate is benefited. Come to another one, sea and moon and clone fish, this is sea and moon. Which doesn't get a benefit. But clone fish will hide in the tentacles of the sea and moon from the predators. So it will hide in the tentacles. So clone fish will get benefit. Sea and moon doesn't get benefit. Here cattle aggregate will get benefit. Cow doesn't get any benefit. So this type of relationship is called commensalism. So here you can see barnacles growing on the whale. This is whale zero. Where barnacles growing on this, this is plus. They get benefit. And orchids are small plants which are going on large trees to get sunlight. So orchid gets benefit, the plant, the tree which is too that doesn't get benefit neither home. So here also we no benefit, no home. Barnacles will get benefit. So this type of relationship is called commensalism. This type of relationship is called uh, commensalism. So here in this, where one species is benefited, neither harm, neither is neither harm, it is called commensalism. 
in mutualism both are benefited. Okay. In parasitism predation, only one species is getting benefited. In amensarism, that is one is zero, another is harm. Okay. So when you come to mutualism, that is the, when the next pop type of population attacks the mutualism. So mutualism is one type of interaction where both the species are benefited. So here you can see lichens, which is an association of fungi and algae. So algae will do photosynthesis, they are autotrophic, which will give food materials to fungi. And fungi will absorb nutrients and which will give to algae. So here fungi is getting benefit, algae is getting benefit. So both are benefited, which leads to that is the relationship that is mutualism. Here both are benefited. Okay. And next, there is cooperation that is in mutualism, there is mutual cooperation. Here you can see the plants and animals. Okay. 